Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutiful. Today I want to talk to you about one of the weirdest moments in beer history. And we're going all the way back to 1917 during the midst of World War I. Throughout World War I, the waterways of Europe had been extremely treacherous. Lots of naval battles, plus a lot of merchant ships being attacked as well. It was pretty much unsafe for anyone on the waterways. However, the people of the United Kingdom still had a strong demand for their beer. And one of the most popular beers throughout the entire UK was Guinness. So the hardworking, dedicated employees of Guinness knew that they had to get their product to mainland England to be able to keep people's spirits high, to keep their customers happy, and that was just kind of their part, provide a little, you know, liquid relief from all the tensions of the war. And Guinness in no way was going to let their customers down. In fact, they actually prided themselves in their ability to continue to maintain production and distribution of their product despite all their hardships throughout the globe. Additionally, Guinness often considered their brewing and their product a bit of a religious act. You know, they uh, saw themselves brewing beer for God, and there was no way they were going to let either God or their countrymen down, so they had to get it to them. Now, the journey from Dublin to mainland England was a harsh one. It was over 135 miles across the Irish Sea, and that particular body of water is known for having insanely treacherous storms as is, so it's already pretty dangerous. But when you add to it the complications of the fact that there had been U-boat sightings and even U-boat attacks on both military and merchant vessels, the trip got a little bit more dangerous. Interestingly, Guinness actually had their own naval fleet, you know, non-militarized, of course, and they used it to ship out across Europe and anywhere that the black stuff was in demand. And the pride of their fleet was the W.M. Berkeley. It was a beautiful vessel. It was actually the first vessel that Guinness Brewery owned. It was going to be commandeered by the Royal Navy, uh, which many boats at that time were. However, it was seen as unfit for naval service, so Guinness was still using it for distribution rights. So on October 2nd, 1917, the Berkeley disembarked from Dublin, headed towards Liverpool, and they were carrying 13 crewmen and a hole full of Guinness barrels. Unfortunately, only three hours into their voyage, they were actually struck by a U-boat torpedo and actually ripped the boat in half. The Barclay rapidly took on water, and both halves were just sinking so quickly that the crewmen weren't even able to reach their lifeboats. All hope seemed lost. I'm sure that every single person on that boat thought that they were going to die, either being gunned down by the Germans or drowning or even possibly freezing and how cold the North Atlantic is. But almost as if it was a miracle, an act of God, the barrels in the hole broke free from their bindings, rushed to the end of the ship that was starting to uh, capsize, that was starting to come up out of the water, and it actually kept the ship floating. The beer barrels were buoyant enough that it kept the Berkeley from completely sinking. And these beer barrels actually kept the Berkeley floating long enough that the men were able to rush and actually get into some of their lifeboats and paddle away. Unfortunately, in the chaos, five men, including the captain, were unfortunately lost to the sea. In 1964, the Berkeley's cook actually did an interview for Heart Magazine, which was Guinness's publication, in which he said, The Berkeley was doing her best to go down, but the beer barrels were fighting their way up through the hatches, and that kept us afloat a bit longer. In fact, it's the reason any of us got out of there. These men were actually saved by the buoyancy of beer. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, the hardship for the sailors and their long, long night was nowhere near an end. The few lifeboats that were able to get away were immediately captured by the U-boat that had sank their ship, and the German officers forced them into interrogation for many, many hours, asking if they were smuggling weapons, if they were uh, working in any type of militarized ca uh, capacity, if they were doing anything to help the British and Irish governments. And once the German commander was satisfied that he was able to identify who the ship was, who the crew were, and what their purpose was, he marked the Berkeley off of his kill list. It's weird that the Guinness distribution ship would be on a German kill list, but I guess if you're doing non-lethal 
targeting, you know, I guess uh, that would be a pretty significant hit to the morale. Either way, he checked it off of the kill list and he left. They sank back into the ocean and uh, left the men sitting there floating out in the middle of nowhere late at night, forcing themselves to have to paddle home. The crew paddled all night, constantly shouting out into the distance, hoping somebody would hear them. They didn't have any flares. They didn't have any signals. It was just them, the darkness, the open sea. And luckily, around 5 a.m. the next morning, a passing vessel actually did happen to notice them. The crew immediately got off shore and they went to talk to the actual government officials to report the incident. Unfortunately, <laughs> the torpedo incident was so common in this particular region that the men actually had to wait hours before somebody was able to get in and talk to actual government officials just to document it. That's crazy that this was happening so frequently that there was a line, a queue. Growing frustrated by how long they were being forced to wait, a lot of the crew actually just kind of left, went to the nearest Guinness pub and just started drinking. <laughs> and honestly, you know, I don't really blame them. And in case you were wondering, all the barrels of beer eventually washed up on the Irish coast about a week later, and Guinness actually took it, and they distributed some back out into the public, and they served a lot to the actual townspeople, so pretty interesting story. And that concludes the unfortunate and interesting story of the Guinness naval fleet being sunk by U-boats and how beer was able to save people. And there's several things I find just so incredibly fascinating about this story. As I mentioned, I think it's so interesting to see how beer was actually being targeted by Germans as a way of uh, actually attacking the population. You know, if people aren't able to get their, you know, product during hardships, it's very easy to see how their morale could break and they could start losing interest in the war. You would be surprised how just something so small like that can absolutely devastate morale. So it's just interesting to see that beer came up as an actual target. And most interestingly, if you want to be able to see the Berkeley, I will post a photo of it here. It sunk about 16 miles off the coast of Dublin, and still to this day, divers can go out and they can view the wreck and they can visit it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed. I found this story just so interesting, and uh, I really hope y'all enjoyed just learning a little bit more about beer history, about Guinness history. It's so long and so fascinating. So thank you all very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Remember, there is a story in every bottle. And that life is brutal. Cheers, y'all.